Hey, have you heard? Apple just released version 10.7 for Final Cut Pro. Is it all hype? Is it cool? What's hot and what is not? I'm Dylan John Dickerson, and let's go over what's new in this update. Let's first start with a feature that some of us have been asking for for a while now, which is a scrolling timeline. All this means is that now when you press play, Final Cut will follow the playhead as it plays out your video. In the past, your playhead would just go out of view. So this scrolling timeline feature is nice because you can see the clips that are being played out without having to use your trackpad or mouse to scroll. You can access it by going to Final Cut Pro, go to settings or press the shortcut command and comma, go to playback and hit scroll timeline continuously during playback. So is this feature hot or not? In my opinion, this gets a hot rating. It's not scorching hot, but I'm certainly glad it's been included. The next feature Apple has given us is collapsible secondary storylines. This one gets a hot rating for me because of how organized and neat it'll make your timeline. Too often you may have stacks of media that make your timeline look messy and that can cause friction when editing and it's just annoying to look at. Although you could select your clips and press the shortcut Option, Command and Down Arrow, to blast your clips into the primary storyline, there are times when you may want to keep your media above that primary storyline. So just by selecting your clips, right-clicking, and hitting Collapse to Connected Storyline, Final Cut will automatically bring those clips together in a group in the secondary storyline. And since the group is in this secondary storyline, it still has the magnetic timeline properties. If you decide later that you don't want them connected in the secondary storyline with those magnetic properties, just select the group and hit the shortcut Option, Command, and Up Arrow. The next added feature in this 10.7 update is the ability to change the color of your video rolls independently from their audio. That may be confusing, but let me show you what I mean. So I mainly use audio rolls as a great way to quickly see what media are, say, ambient sound effects, Foley, voiceover, and other types of audio. But as far as our video clips, we've kind of been left with having both the video and audio be the same color. Well, now you can assign roles to both the video and audio of a clip. So maybe you used a different mic on one clip. You could right click, hit assign audio roles, maybe hit edit roles, and add the name of that mic. So now you can see a difference in audio and video roles when you select your clips and hit the shortcut Control S to expand your audio components. Definitely an organizational feature that would really come in handy on bigger and more complex projects. Although this is a nice addition, it is getting a lukewarm rating for me at the moment. Room temperature. Up next, we have improvements to the object tracker in Final Cut Pro. I have to be honest, I have not been impressed with the built-in object tracker in Final Cut, but this update claims to have improved the machine learning option for better tracking. So by adding a tracker and putting it over our subject, then switching to machine learning and hitting analyze. You'll notice that it does a much better job at tracking with this cyclist, even when he goes behind the trees. The old version of the tracker would definitely have done something like this, where it loses the track and just wonks out. So this new update definitely improves it, but I tried testing it on a few other clips and it didn't do a great job. If your subject is only blocked briefly, then it'll be handy though. It's definitely an improvement, but I have to give this a not hot rating. The last thing I'm gonna cover in this new update is the improvement in export times if you're exporting out in HEVC or H.264. There are a few requirements to take advantage of this though. You need to be updated to macOS Sonoma, and it also requires you to have either the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra, the M2 Max or the M2 Ultra, or the M3 Max. You'll see when exporting, we now have this Allow Export Segmentation button, which I believe is automatically on by default. Basically, this makes you export faster. However, in my tests, and from what I've seen from my buddy Dylan Bates and Jen Jager on their channels, the improved speed is not anything to write home about. For a five to 10 minute video, you're looking at about 30 seconds to a minute off your export time. So for me, this gets a not hot rating, but it is still, of course, a nice addition, and I'm grateful for any sort of improvement that saves me time. Now make sure that before you update, you go into your applications folder, 
find Final Cut Pro, right click and compress it. So just in case this update does some funky things or has a lot of bugs, you can then revert to the old version. So what did you think of this new update? Is it hot or is it not? Let me know in the comments and have a great rest of your day.